Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to do is expand the ownership tutorial and move on to some ways to actually expand and allow people to actually have access other than the owner. So we have the blocks that we had in the ownership tutorial, so the lock block, we have that. And then I also created an item version uh, because this um, can also be used. Now the Basically, placing down the block gives the ownership for the player, so whoever is the player um, that places down the block has ownership. Now, we covered that in the other one. Um, another thing that you can do is you can actually use crafting recipes to uh, assign certain items for ownership. So, if someone crafts an item, for example, this pouch, now we basically have the ownership for that particular item. You can see that it says MBT and then it has three tags attached to it. Um, that basically means that um, there is the ownership and stuff that we basically assign to it. Uh, this we might be able to go under the... Um, hmm. Not sure if it is actually displayed. If we go slash data and get and then we might need block and then we'll just set the coordinates and then it'll basically tell us the um, ownership, the password is basically fault, and it doesn't have a password, and a few other variables for this particular thing. So as you can see, this basically has owner and it has the password. Same with the actual pouch thing here. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, the passwords are basically run by names. So basically what you need to do in order to actually set the password is you need to rename an item. So it needs to be a piece of paper to actually set the password. So if we want to set the password, what we're going to do is we're going to use an anvil. We're just going to put a piece of paper in here. We're going to name it what we want. And then we should have a stick that we can, or a piece of paper that we can use if we sneak. Uh, I don't even think you need to sneak with the actual block, only for the item itself. So uh, if we right click on the block with the piece of paper that has the display name of stick, then it's going to assign the display name, um, basically the stick password. So we're going to actually just get the data for this particular block again by typing the command right here, get data, get block, and then the coordinates of the block. Now what it's actually telling us is it's um, the owner is dev, that's us. The password is now stick. So that's basically what we've assigned. So basically if you have the book in your main hand then you can unlock and lock the particular thing. If you want to reset the password as long as you're the owner then you can do that by basically typing something else in. So maybe we wanted three pound signs. We could do that and then we could basically set the password to three pound signs. We can also do that test again and as you can see the three pound signs are basically what the password is. Worst password ever but you know basically that's that. Uh, if we right click on the block now with the book as you can see it's not going to lock it so we actually need to make sure that our book is also have three pound signs and then we can basically lock and unlock as normal. So if we have it locked, it's basically going to prevent us from opening the inventory screen, where if it is unlocked, we can obviously open it. So with the item itself, it's a little bit different. Um, we'll use the two things that we have here, but uh, if we have the offhand item, uh, we'll put the paper in our offhand and then we'll right click, sneak and right click. And then what this will do is it will basically assign the password as long as it's paper in the offhand. If we set our book with our same password in our offhand and then right click, then it basically locks the pouch or unlocks it. Now the pouch when unlocked, we can open it and it has the same inventory and everything like that. If we lock it, then obviously we can't access it. 
So, uh, yeah, that's basically how the ownership thing can actually work. Now, it requires a little bit of the ownership part to actually know who the owner is. So if the password needs to reset, then we can actually allow the owner to reset that particular password, not any regular player. So again, crafting basically is the way that we would get the item that can support the actual password and stuff like that. And then with blocks, it's just when the block is placed. So let's go into Ember Crater and I'll show you how this uh, is basically set up for both of these two items. Okay, so there's actually two things going on here. That's why there's a lot more um, things going on, like a lot more elements. Um, for the first thing that we actually want to do is I've covered the block settings and stuff like that. That's not too much different than what we have in the actual uh, ownership tutorial. I'll link to the ownership tutorial so you guys can go watch that and see how the block is actually set up. The item on the other hand is a little bit different. So I have the maximum stack size set to one. Uh, that is important for working with inventories and stuff like that. And uh, I, for just for the uh, heck of it, I basically added the item immune to fire because I mean, if it has items in it, then it's probably pretty important. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to do was bind the uh, inventory that we created. Uh, I'll cover the inventory in just a second, but the inventory lock block in, uh, inventory. So basically I've selected the lock block inventory for that and I've set the proper amount of slots for that particular inventory. So again, a lot of people keep reporting that the GUIs and stuff don't work. The inventory, now the, there's nine slots, right? So when we go to the inventory, it will say that there's eight, but there's also a zero zero slot. So there is then actually nine slots for this inventory. There needs to be the same number here as the amount of slots in your inventory. So just because it says eight doesn't mean there is eight slots. There's actually nine because it starts at zero. So make sure that's filled out properly or it's not going to work. It's going to give you an error and that's commonly reported on my channel <laughs> all right and then triggers uh then when we actually have it crafted what we're doing is we're basically assigning the owner that's the most important part and then what we're doing is we're just setting a default password so it is equal to basically blank and we're basically setting the uh actual logic variable to locked and we're setting this to false so we can actually open the inventory rate when we craft it. So that's the only things that we have here. These are all MBT variables. You can find them all under the item procedures. And if you scroll down a little bit, they're all down here. So you have your two strings right here and your logic variable here. There's also a number one, but we haven't used any numbers in this particular tutorial. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's go over to the lock block and then we'll cover uh, the procedures for that. So if we go to triggers, now I've covered all the settings in the actual um, actual tutorial for the ownership, so I'm not going to double over that again. You can go watch that video and it'll explain all the settings and stuff. So there's two particular uh, procedures. There's one placed by, um, one block placed by when block is placed by and then basically the entity. So again, we have the very similar system that we have set up there in the item. So it's only for blocks. Now, if you want the blocks, you need to go under block management and then it's these ones right here. There's the number one, but we also need the uh, logic variable and two string variables. So these two right here. For the ownership, what you wanna do is actually get the display name and if you go under entity, the display name of the entity is right here. So you just stick that right where your string for your text of your entity would be. And that's how you basically set that up. All right, so basically default is just a blank password and we're setting the locking mechanism to false so we can open up the inventory. <laughs> Now 
The other procedure is when block is right clicked on and what we're going to do is we're going to open up the lock block inventory. Now that's basically um, how that's all set up. Now if we go to our block right clicked procedure, uh, this is basically running on a global update tick. So we're using a global procedure. Um, pardon me, not a global update tick. We're using a global trigger called player right clicks on block. And what we're doing here is we're going to test for that particular block right here. Uh, to do that, you can find the necessary blocks for getting the block here under block. It's way at the bottom here. I'm not going to scroll all the way down. And then for the comparator, you want to go under logic and then it's the yellow one here. And for the actual item slot, it's right here. So you can select the item there. Then what we're doing is we want to test if it's the owner and basically if they have command or if they have command permission number three. So I've covered the ownership system before in the other tutorial. So if you um, want to watch that, this is basically the important part to basically allow the owner and any ops permission to basically do certain actions and basically override the default um, system. Now, if they're not a op and not the owner, then it goes straight down to this else section. So what it's doing here is it's testing for the main hand of the particular entity and we're testing for a regular book. And then what we're doing is we're going to also test for the MBT tag for the password of that particular block. And then we're going to see if it's the same as the display name of the particular entity. Um, oh, pardon me, the display name of the provided item name. So the item name, there's actually a display name right here, get display name of, and then there is the actual um, item inventory. So instead of basically setting it to um, our, our book again, what we can actually do is we can just copy over the main hand and then we'll we already know that the book is in the main hand, so we don't need to test for that again. We just need to basically um, test for our main hand itself. So that's what it's doing there. Now, if it is, then what we're doing is we're basically going to cancel out the per procedure. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go to advanced and then cancel procedure because it's a global variable and it supports as under the dependencies over here. It basically says that we can cancel out make a cancelable and it's going to be run on server side and then we have our other dependencies that it also supports so we can use the cancel event to basically prevent the inventory from opening so that's what we're doing there and then what we're doing is we're going to basically test if the uh, block mbt locked variable is equal to true if it is then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to false and just print out block is unlocked. So basically when they unlock the block, this is just the message that basically gets sent to the player. For that particular one, you can find it under the player procedures and then you scroll down a little bit and it's the one that says send message and then the message and then the entity and then show in taskbar and stuff like that. I ha usually don't use the taskbar, I just use chat. So it's a little bit easier to follow. And then the alternative one is the else statement. And then we're basically just going to set this to the lock variable to true. And we're going to print out to the player block is locked. All right, so after that, uh, what we want to do is if they don't have the book in their inventory, then there's an else statement down here. And then we're going to test if the block inventory is locked equals true. So if this is true then we want to cancel out the procedure and just give them some help message to basically unlock the block so in our case uh, sneak with a book in the main hand now we know that they don't actually need to sneak so that's actually false all we need to do is actually right click with a block with a um, book in the right uh, in the, the main hand and then it will with the proper name and it'll unlock it. So that's basically what's going on there. Uh, the other one, 
for the actual owner. There's a few things going on here. Uh, the name tag is from the other tutorial. That's what uh, basically allows us to change the ownership of the particular password. Now it requires the owner to actually be able to do this. So we're getting the display name of the owner again and or if it's a operator of the server. And then we're going to test for our different items. So the first one is the name tag. What this is doing is just canceling the event from actually running. And then we're going to set the owner name to get display name of the actual item. So we're going to use a item name tag for the item. And then we're going to basically get the name of that particular uh, display name for that particular item. And that's going to set it to the owner tag. So as soon as this happens, the owner will basically change. Uh, then we're just going to basically output the uh, some text to the player saying owner is set to and then the owner name. The password script is very similar. So what we're doing here is we're actually going to get the item in the main hand, which is going to be paper. We're going to cancel the event and we already know that's only going to work for the owner and the any operators. So again, what it's going to do is just cancel the event set the password to the display name of the from the paper and basically print out the message to the player and basically this last part right down here is the exact same thing as down here it's just um that it's running on the owner side of things so we're testing if the item in the main hand is equal to the book the password equals the display name of the or the, the password of the block equals the display name of the book itself. And then we're canceling it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, basically run this script down here that we covered for the actual player. So all that locking mechanism stuff. And then what we want to do is um, if there's an else statement for anything that is um, not a book, paper, or name tag, then what we want to do is basically test if it's locked, if it's true, if it is, then we want to print out that message. Now that message is wrong again, so I'm going to fix that up right now. So basically that's just printing out the help text for the, the help menu. All right, so that's basically all that uh, is going into actually coding all that particular stuff. I think I have covered where to get all the particular blocks and how everything works in this procedure. So let's move on to the next one. I'll just save this. And the pouch is very similar, so pouch right clicked. So this one uses a global procedure as well. And it's basically the exact same thing as the other procedure that we just covered. The only difference is it's running under a different uh, global procedure. This one's running under player right clicks with item. So the other one was player right clicks block, I think. and basically the exact same thing that we're doing with the other procedure. Uh, the only difference is uh, it requires the offhand rather than the main hand. And our main hand item basically is, requires to be the item that we has the inventory and that we want to lock and stuff. So as you can see here, it says our item in the main hand and then we're testing for the pouch. And then all the other items that we basically had are all in our offhand slot so when we're actually testing for the item for the mbt uh, again the item mbt can be found under item procedures and if you scroll down a little bit you have the item variables and both for the testing and setting of the variables down here so you just basically replace item stack with your offhand for those particular things or your main hand and depending on what you want for your system. Now this is all run on the main hand for the actual MBT so it needs to be run on that particular side of things. But yeah that's basically all there is to it. I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's the exact same thing as the other procedure. The only difference is it's running on different trigger and we're testing for our main hand being the item that we want to unlock lock or set password 
And then we're also basically just um, getting our offhand item for basically setting the password or unlocking it. So that's all there is to it. Um, the recipe, again, um, it, when the item is actually crafted, so this is why I needed a recipe, is I just needed to add a recipe so we could actually craft the item. And then I think the password screen, now I didn't actually implement that, so everything is done through the um, item display names. It was just easier to do because items didn't actually support opening another screen uh, that I could actually figure out within a certain time period. So I just basically used the system that I showed in the video. So hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, oh, actually one more thing. Uh, any MBT, or not MBT, uh, any local variables that are used in my previous procedures. I've noticed a spike in things not working, and I think people might be trying to use the procedure for um, that I've provided. Now, there is a bug in mCreator 2021.2 that is kind of really annoying, and sadly, it's not gonna be able to be fixed anytime soon until the next update. But if we were to set a variable, a bunch of a bunch of variables, only the top one is basically going to stay when you actually import the um, any local variable. So it basically breaks a lot of my example procedures. So uh, if you see the tutorial and have a chance to actually see the um, local variables and stuff before you import the actual uh, procedure, make sure to set all those variables to the proper names. Now they have to be um, exactly the same way that they're set up in the actual procedure or it won't actually work uh, to import it. It'll just import that one particular variable and all the local variables won't be set up properly. So I just wanted to point that out because it is a little bit of an annoying bug and um, I don't want people to think that there's stuff not working, but they probably do. They just need the proper local variable set up first. All right, so outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.